It's Nolan. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I could blow a stack, bet I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the back. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I could blow a stack, bet I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the back. My studio says she's turning into fireworks right. These reptiles on me like a Lakasha yeah. Plain Jane, make your eyes hurt Fuck a sponsor My mission to give it to Christ But without the concert Pandemic showed me I could get it off the muscle I be grinding year round Y'all be waiting for the summer I just feel the gaps Don't need a light for the tunnel Y'all looking highly disgruntled I use the mic for my hustle Boy, I came up Triple beam changed up Built the team Serving up the fiends Through the screen uh, Living out the dream uh, Still independent Don't need the red tape Gang green Cut the dead Wait, that's my headspace. Yeah, I've been a boss, I just now embraced it. Feeling in W nines like an application. Strong mind, habitations, planning vacations. I put my dogs in the business like I'm Baron Davis. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I can blow a stack, bet I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the back. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I can blow a stack, bet I make it back. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the Kid J. Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. Hope everyone is doing well out there. Now, in this particular video, we're going to be getting into Diddy. And um, unfortunately for him, the path to freedom is not looking any clearer, okay? We've got an attorney by the name of Tony Busby who came out just a few days ago and said that he was representing 50, uh, 50 more potential victims that are coming out and they're going to be uh, submitting lawsuits against him for S.A., um, drugging, um, trafficking, just all sorts of misconduct. You know what I'm saying? Misconduct, mistreating people, abuse, the whole nine, right? Well, Mr. Tony Busby has now come out and done a press conference as of today, just a couple hours ago, and he now is representing about 120 accusers. So Diddy is now about to be hit with over 100 more lawsuits on the way. They are literally trying to bury this man in the ninth chamber of hell if they possibly can. And that's while still living. Okay, so, wow. Not to mention the other lawsuits, the 12 lawsuits that were already filed against him. Not to mention the Cassie video where we got to see it, unfortunately, because I don't, I don't like the fact that we had to see it. But it, it definitely proved what she was saying was real when a lot of people were coming out here trying to say they thought she was lying, thought she was capping, thought she was money hungry. So we did get to see that, right? And word is that that footage that we saw of Diddy abusing Cassie in that hotel was also the product of a freak off. There was at least one other person in that room that she was running out of, right? So shit is shit is looking bad for homie. But uh, hey man, you set yourself up. These are the decisions you made. These are your actions. This is your behavior. So whatever happens, wherever you end up when all of this is said and done, this is a grave that you created with your own hands. All right. So let's get into it. They say Diddy is about to be hit with lawsuits for S.A. and abuse. And a Houston-based law firm representing 120 accusers is telling some of their stories for the first time, including allegations Diddy s a a nine-year-old boy. Now, that's absolutely fucking disgusting. There's no other way to say it. There's no, there's no beautiful, nice way to, to dress this up. That is fucking disgusting. All of it is, but that is especially disgusting. 
Attorney Tony Busby says a wave of lawsuits will be filed against Diddy in the next 30 days, including from an accuser who claims once again he was only nine years old when Diddy and others as aid him at the Bad Boy Records studio in New York City. Busby claims Diddy lured this nine year old to an audition with the promise of a record deal and then allegedly as aid him. In addition, Busby claims his law firm will be filing suit on behalf of other accusers who claim they were minors when Diddy abused them, including another who says Diddy forced them to perform oral sex. This is this is. Busby says another accuser was 15 years old when they were flown out to NYC to attend a party where they were drugged and taken into a private room with Diddy where he allegedly essayed them before others took turns having their way. And this is a young lady. Okay. Now, this Tony Busby character, they say is a big time attorney who sued a bunch of celebs, including Travis Scott and Chris Brown, I believe. Uh, yeah, I knew I knew I'd heard that name before the Chris Brown shit that happened out in Texas. Busby claims his clients were sexually exploited. We'll just say that as a catch all by Diddy and his associates. And he says they were typically forced to consume a drink that was laced with xylazine or trank, which is a horse tranquilizer. A horse. Now, y'all know how heavy and big a fucking horse is. As we reported, this is TMZ, by the way. Busby's law firm announced Friday they were repping more than 50 alleged victims, as I stated in the beginning of the video, who came forward with gut-riching gut stories about what went down at Diddy's alleged freak-off parties. Busby described the mind-boggling allegations as debauchery and depravity exacted by powerful people. And now, he says, again, there are 120 people who will be filing individual lawsuits against him and others. Okay. Now, in addition to Diddy, he ain't the only person that may possibly get dirty in this uh, series of lawsuits to come. Busby strongly hinted that other celebrities would be named in these lawsuits, and he said he would be suing anyone who was involved or knew about this alleged abuse and refused to help put an end to this. Busby said the alleged abuse happened in well-known venues and hotels, as well as private residences, mostly in L.A. and New York. And he said the lawsuits will include names that will shock you. OK. As we all know, Diddy is currently sitting in jail, um, I believe, excuse me, I believe he is about to try to uh, file a third appeal as he's beefing up his um, legal team to try to get another grant for uh, for bond and bail. I don't know if he's going to get it. He's already tried twice and been denied. I don't know if they're going to give him the opportunity to, to succeed on the third. Um, they've already laid out the foundation that he is allegedly a flight risk. They also state that he is a threat to harassing victims, and they've already brought up his history of doing so even before investigation was even publicly noted. So what do you think he would do when his life is literally on the line? Diddy's attorney, Mark Agnafilo says that he's fighting hard for the bad boy records founder claiming that the feds are gunning for Diddy simply because he's a successful black man. I'm sorry, sir, but those words fall extremely short. We're not going for none of that shit over here. OK, so you could you could have kept that to your motherfucking self. Now, Diddy does want to take the stand. We have heard that they say he's eager to take the stand and they say that he is uh, looking forward to showing the world that a black man can go up against the feds and come out on top. I'm sorry, sir. Are they feeding you drugs while you're in jail? <laughs> Or is your attorney out here just railroading you in public eye for his own uh, for his own personal spectacle because he wants to see you go down along with the rest of the world? Because I just don't see how this person is really working on your behalf. 
Do I give a fuck? No, but it just comes across as very shady, in my opinion. This motherfucker doing interviews about every day. Look like he trying to increase his profile. He want to be the new owner of Bad Boy Records. But that's just how I see it. Now, according to Tony Busby, there's a lot more to be found, right? So they've got this Instagram post from him where he says, the Busby Law Firm has been associated by the Ava Law Group to act as lead counsel to pursue claims on behalf of more than 50 individuals who suffered SA and abuse at the hands of Sean Diddy Combs and his cohorts. This group of brave individuals include both men and women. Many were minors when the abuse occurred. Some of these brave individuals reported the incidents to police. Others did not. Each individual story is gut wrenching and heartbreaking. The acts, um, excuse me, this page just jumped on a weird way. The acts complained of occurred at hotels, private homes, and also at the infamous P Diddy freak golf parties. The violations against this group of individuals are mind boggling and can only be described as debauchery and depravity exacted by powerful people. So this is kind of the same stuff I was already saying. I expect the group seeking redress will grow as the case progresses. I expect many other individuals will be implicated. We expect to have a press conference. So this was uh, before the press conference where some of these stories can be told as the nation learns more and more and grapples with the potential scope of this scandal. Our firm has always been at the forefront of the most important cases in the United States. We are proud to represent this group of brave souls and pray for justice on their behalf. If you know of an individual seeking uh, assistance who was abused as described above, please don't hesitate to encourage them to contact our firm. The consultation is confidential. Okay. As stated before, Mr. Busby has conducted a uh, press conference. It was about 40 minutes long. I'm not going to sit through 40 minutes of this press conference. I'm going to be honest with y'all, but I did get a couple of clips just so you can kind of see where they're coming from and what they have and what to expect. Okay. So let's go ahead and just pull up a couple of these clips, shall we? The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming people claim. This man just said over 3,000 people have contacted them. Now, I don't know how to take that, right? Because on one hand, if you just blindly follow everything that's going on, and I'm not here to advocate for Diddy, not, not 1%, okay? But 3,000 people, and I mean, this is a lot of people because it is, uh, I believe with Tony Busby, his case, his range of dates begin from 1991 up to 2024. So that's a very long time. But just imagine 3,000 people. Now, I got to be honest. In a sea of 3,000, I would imagine at least a few, and I'm just being lenient here, at least a few got to be trying to get in where they fit in to work. They move. I'm not saying that these are a bunch of liars. I would never say that because I always want to hear out victims and um, allow them to tell their story and be heard. And I always want to give that first before anything. But three thousand people, how many How have they been vetted? I don't know. It's, it seems to me that this Busby law firm, um, I'm going to assume that they mean well, but I do believe that there's a bit of grandstanding here as well. That's that they're trying to um, take their public profile to the next level, which is ultimately just going to bring in more money for their firm. But, you know, whatever. Let, let, I'm going to let them continue, though, because there are some real shit. There is some real shit being said and real stories and real victims deserve to have their voice 
But that's just something that came to mind as I heard over 3,000 people. Shit. Claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. And you should know, to the extent the clients feel comfortable, we also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. Now before we discuss the nature of the claims and claimants themselves, let me comment on the large volume of calls we have received since our first announcement. Even before the indictment of Sean Combs, we had received a small volume of calls and had screened a handful of cases. After the indictment of Sean Combs and the announcement that we were pursuing these claims, the floodgates opened. People who wouldn't otherwise for a variety of reasons are now stepping forward to make their voices heard and to pursue justice. But no, most of these people are scared. They fear backlash in their communities. They fear backlash in their own families. They are afraid of retaliation from the perpetrators and their associates. They are rightly afraid for their own personal safety. I expect that through this process, many powerful people will be exposed. Many dirty secrets will be revealed. We know what we are potentially up against. And as is always the case in situations like this, when a celebrity is involved, people can be downright mean and nasty. You would be shocked at the length fans will go, no matter the evidence, to the contrary, to defend celebrities they love. I mean, there's a reason for this word fans. They're fanatics. I've personally already been threatened multiple times on social media. And when I agreed to pursue this, I expected as much. This isn't my first rodeo. But victims who step forward to have their voices heard should not be subjected to that kind of conduct. They should not be targeted. I want to say this, and I want to be clear about it. Although we are vetting each call as stringently as we can, I always start with a mindset that I believe victims. I believe victims because I understand the tremendous courage it takes to step forward. So if you're watching this, please hear me. If you're out there and you have been victimized, you are not alone. All right, so that's the first clip that I have from this uh, press conference. And again, I'm not going to show the entire press conference because that's 40 minutes. And um, if you want to see the entire press conference, I believe uh, they live streamed it via um, one of those Fox networks. If you put in Fox, Tony Busby live stream, you can find it and see the whole thing. Now, out of those 120 individuals that they're representing on this case or this series of cases, to be more specific, um, they're saying that 60 are male, 60 are women. They say the tally also includes 25 people who claim they were minors when their particular incidents occurred. OK. Busby clarified that this is not a clash action lawsuit and that all the cases, once again, will be filed individually. Defendants in these cases will include banks, pharmaceutical companies and hotels. Uh, OK. He says the day will come when we can name names other than Sean Combs and they will shock you. This is this is wild stuff man you've been out here just running amok in any palace you can find and they about to fucking they are about to send you to the ninth chamber of hell sir they finna do you dirty take that take that motherfucker now let me go ahead and pull up this other clip that I have here 
Give me a second. The thankless and cowardly keyboard warriors love to attack. We know what we're up against. We did not enter this fray blindly. I wish it was my last such fray. I wish this type of hate behavior wasn't so pervasive. But it is what it is, so we will press on. As I said, our law firms have been retained by 120 individuals at this point to pursue cases in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. You should know, in this group, it is evenly divided between males and females. There are 60 males and 60 females who have joined us to pursue these claims as plaintiffs. In this group, 62% identify as African-American, 30% are white, and the remainder are Hispanic or Asian. The victims are from more than 25 states. The majority are from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. I don't want to focus on the ages of these victims. When you talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases were minors at the time of the acts complained of. The time frame of the acts complained of is very wide. The conduct at issue spans from the years 1991 all the way till this year, 2024. If you wonder why there are so many alleged victims, that's your answer. We're talking about more than 25 years of this type of conduct. Now, although most of the victims who have stepped forward were victimized after 2015, this has been going on for a very long time. Now, when you think about the fact that some of this conduct occurred 25 years ago, and you wonder why would it take somebody so long to step forward, I want to remind you that, that many states in the United States have recognized that it's very difficult for a victim to step forward and to make these types of allegations when something very terrible has happened to them. I'll use New York, the state of New York, as an example. The state of New York has specific statutes in place that revive claims that are even claims that would typically be not able to be brought, that revive such claims, and they can be brought even 25 to 30 years later because there's a recognition there in New York and California and other states that it's very difficult for a victim to come forward. And I would, I would respectfully suggest the only reason many of these people are coming forward because they see other victims coming forward. And it gives them some comfort that, hey, I won't be the only one. And I expect more victims will come forward. Now, with all this information coming out there, all these new um, victims coming out, et cetera, Diddy's lawyer has made it abundantly clear that Diddy actually has no intention on taking a plea deal that would perhaps get him, you know, reduced sentencing, perhaps snitching on some other motherfuckers to, uh, you know, kind of decrease his involvement, say that there was a bigger play at hand. I don't know. But up to this point, Mr. Agnafilo, or however you say this nigga name, he says Diddy is not open to a plea bargain. In a quote, he says, it's up to Mr. Combs and I don't see it happening because he believes he is innocent. And what's more, he believes that he needs to stand up not just for himself, but for his family and everybody who's been targeted by the federal government. He feels an obligation to those people to say, you know what? Maybe I can break the model. Maybe I can show the world that a black man can win in federal court. Final quote, he says, and I think he probably is the only person I know of who might be able to actually accomplish that goal. So he's sitting here stating that he believes that Diddy's going to be able to take the stand and effectively convince the jury and the judge that he had no involvement in none of this shit that he's being accused of. Now y'all tell me, 
Y'all think this man really gives a fuck about Diddy? Or is he serving his ass to the feds on a silver platter with a goddamn uh, turkey baster? Because <laughs> this shit sounds too crazy for me. Now, Diddy did beef up his, uh, his legal team. New information has been released that he's beefing up his legal team. So it's not just Mr. Agnafilo, but he literally believes that he can beat this. Okay. So among those that have joined his team, we have Anthony Rico and Alexandra Shapiro. Now who is Anthony Rico? They say he's known for leading def the defense in up to 45 federal death penalty cases, including People vs. Corey Arthur, where Arthur was charged in the murder of the son of former Time Warner CEO Gerald Levin, according to his profile. They say Rico was able to get the death penalty off the table and litigate Arthur's terms to life in prison. So. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. But you're telling me that he was able to get the death penalty taken off the table, which is, I guess, you know, very solid work on his behalf. But the nigga still served life in prison. I don't know. I thought I was I was expecting, you know, maybe death penalty was taken off and his, his sentence was reduced to 10 to 15 with a chance of getting parole. No, nah, they said that nigga still had to serve life. He was still barbecue chicken in that motherfucker, man. <laughs> they say he also represented the undercover NYPD officer acquitted. Okay. In the killing of 23 year old Sean Bell in 2006. Oh, it's fuck you, Mr. Rico. Oh, yeah. But we'll continue. Says on a larger scale, Rico served on the council in the world trade bombing conspiracy case and embassy bombing case in 1998. He graduated from Northeast Northeastern University School of Law and has been privately practicing since 1982. So, you know, I guess based on his history, he takes on some pretty high profile cases and he's gotten reduced sentencing and perhaps acquittal. I won't even really count that police officer. Cause you know how, how NYPD officers be getting off of everything, any goddamn way. But next up is Miss Alexandra Shapiro. Okay. Now Miss Shapiro is an appellate attorney who signed off on Combs appeal of the denial in his bond release court document state. She's labeled one of the nation's leading appellate lawyers. Her work is recognized in the reversals of both criminal and civil cases. Oh, okay. You might got a little firepower, boy. They say after graduating from Columbia University School of Law in 1991, she began working as a clerk to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg before moving on to white collar defense. Most notably, she landed two Supreme Court victories, narrowing the scope of federal fraud laws in order to reverse the wire fraud convictions of Louis Ciminelli and former Andrew Cuomo aide Joseph Percoso. Shapiro also argued the Salmon vs. United States case, which was the first insider trading case heard by the Supreme Court in 20 years. She's also representing Sean Combs' cellmate, Sam Bankman Freed, who was convicted of fraud in November of 2023. She also authored the novel Presumed Guilty. So. It seems to me that she's like really good with fraud cases. But. Diddy's not. To my knowledge, accused of fraud. What about the S.A.? What about the trafficking what about the uh trafficking in order to partake in prostitution i don't know hey man do what you gotta do do what y'all gotta do man do what y'all gotta do 
Cause they say that the Fed, what is the what is the rate? They said 90, 99%, 95%, something crazy like that. And you got evidence. They say they got videotapes. I don't see how you're going to wiggle up out of that one, man. But you know what? We just got to we just got to sit back and allow and allow due process to run its course. Can't rush it. Can't tr can't take this too far right or left. All we can do is allow due process to run its course. And I don't see I don't see a, you know, a way out for this guy. All pun intended with the album he released back in the days. But. um, You fucked up. You fucked up bad. You done did a lot of wild and foul shit, brother. And that's just off of what we know. All of these other allegations and all these other victims. I mean, they're going to have their opportunity to come tell their story and try to, you know, let the world know what they've been through. But I'm not even speaking to that. I'm just talking about what we already have known for the past shit about 10 months. Use a foul nigga, bruh. Let me know what y'all think of all of this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. And I will catch y'all on the next one, all right? Peace. King of my city in Codesac. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the Gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. I was ready for years and they doubted me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my I came back with some battery, stand for my honor. But you run no corner, packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.